Mississippi State University, Dr. Johnson, and we're talking about the uh, Tennessee State University and the uh, national education agenda. And of course, Dr. Johnson, before we had our uh, first commercial break, uh, we promised that we'd give you an opportunity to uh, talk about the uh, national agenda, uh, and, and, and this is your opportunity to do so. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Haney. Uh, one of the things that President Obama has really set aside, and that is a very aggressive and robust mm. uh, agenda for higher education in the United States. Mm. As a matter of fact, when he looked at the competitiveness of the United States vis-a-vis -vis the rest mm -hmm. of the world, he noticed that we'd lost our position yeah. in terms of uh, college completers. Mm -hmm. That is at the two-year and the four-year level. Mm -hmm. And so his agenda is to make sure that we take over the world position by mm -hmm. the year 2012. Mm -hmm. And to do that, he's going to need a lot of cooperation, not only at the K-12 level, but also in higher education, both at the community college mm -hmm. and at the four-year institutions. Mm -hmm. And so this agenda then will focus not just on t in terms of getting people into the pipeline, mm -hmm. but it changes that focus to how we get them out of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. In other words, graduation mm -hmm. rates. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So for higher education institutions to really concentrate on that, uh, we've got to ensure that these students can persist. We've got to ensure that they are retained and that they actually come out of the pipeline uh, really ready for mm -hmm. the workforce. And when you stop and think about the national strategies to do that, okay. it, it's quite simple. Uh, we've got to align our educational system. So the first strategy is educational system alignment. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring in some of the uh, tools that yeah. even the state of Tennessee is using, uh, and Tennessee State University has been involved mm -hmm. in that. Uh, the governor set aside a Tennessee alignment committee mm -hmm. made up of higher education leaders, business leaders, et cetera. And they are uh, attempting to ensure that the funding formulas mm -hmm. uh, are changed so that we focus upon the right things, mm -hmm. meaning graduation mm -hmm. rates, mm -hmm. retention rates mm -hmm. of our students. And secondly, that we're ensuring that the students are prepared once we receive them in college. Mm -hmm. And so the Tennessee Diploma Project was uh, instituted to do just that, to make mm -hmm. sure that we are receiving students mm -hmm. from the K-12 area that are college ready. Now, that lessens our workload. Once you get a student that's well prepared, mm -hmm. you have to spend less time in the remediation of mm -hmm. that student. Right. And you can spend more time in terms of advisement, mm -hmm. not only academic, but also career advising, mm -hmm. and ensuring that that student has a smooth transition to college, mm -hmm. but also one that's going to, to ensure that, uh, that they are successful, successful. Mm -hmm. degree completers. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other part of that strategy, of course, is participation. Yeah. We've got to increase the level of participation of Tennessee, of Tennesseans mm -hmm. uh, to attend uh, community college and four-year institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor used a statistic, and I mentioned that earlier, yeah. that if we take 100 ninth graders, only 19 of them will be successful at the other end, that is completing two years of college or mm -hmm. from the four-year institution. Mm -hmm. We've got to improve that's that. 20%. That's 20%. Uh, uh, yeah, that's 19%. But that's, uh, <laughs> that's something that we can't be satisfied mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we've got to be able to use this as a vehicle of increasing our participation rate. Mm -hmm. And that also will mean that we will become an attractive community mm -hmm. for uh, corporations to relocate mm -hmm. here who's looking for an educated workforce. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we've got to make sure that we do is to ensure that the learner outcomes are achieved. So we've got to, to, to really concentrate on student learning outcomes at mm -hmm. the university mm -hmm. to make sure that we pay attention mm -hmm. to how we are improving the mm -hmm. learner outcomes. Mm -hmm. And so that means proper assessment vehicles mm -hmm. to do that. We've also got to make sure that the students persist. So we've got to have tools and available advising strategies to ensure that they can move through the pipeline and mm -hmm. that they complete their degree requirements. Mm -hmm. But, of course, taxpayers and the public are looking for returns on their okay. investment. <laughs> they we call that ROI. Okay. And so, therefore, ROI. we have to make sure that we have alignment mm -hmm. with the economic and workforce needs mm -hmm. of our community mm -hmm. and for the businesses that are re mm -hmm. lo relocating here. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that uh, at Tennessee State University that we're well prepared for that with mm -hmm. the array of programs that we have mm -hmm. in emerging technologies and emerging fields. Mm -hmm that will allow us to prepare students for that mm -hmm. workforce and for that global workforce mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is a very, very comprehensive program. And, and I think you mentioned the, <coughs> the year uh, 2012. Now, the 2020. Uh, I'm sorry, 2020. Right. Now, that, that seems to be uh, really ambitious in terms of trying to uh, raise us up to, uh, uh, well, number one, 
if, if that is a goal, does, does that seem to be overly ambitious? Well, uh, it's overly we ambitious, but we have not seen the uh -huh. amount of injections, uh, uh -huh. I'm talking about financial injections, uh -huh. from the federal level that we're seeing now. Uh -huh. Uh, not only with the stimulus funds, but also the uh, College Completion Act and mm -hmm. all of those uh, funds, the Race to the Top, mm -hmm. are all programs designed to mm -hmm. hone in mm -hmm. on these strategies mm -hmm. that I just mentioned to you. And so, so in a real sense, uh, there's a lot of money that's available to uh, educational institutions, uh, historical black institutions, as well as other institutions. Well, and that is correct, mm -hmm. but it's all going to be competitive. Uh -huh. You take the race. Explain that. Why don't you talk about that? Well, right? well, uh, and I think the governor is, is, is Governor Bredesen has done a good job of laying that out to the mm -hmm. legislature mm -hmm. and also to the public in general mm -hmm. about the race to the top. There's mm -hmm. some things that are going to be required to make this state competitive mm -hmm. for those mm -hmm. funds, mm -hmm. and so things that he's trying to work out now are how do you actually evaluate uh, in-service teachers? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you make their, um, uh, you know, how productive they are in the classroom in terms of uh, the student uh, test scores? Do you tie that to the evaluation process? Uh, so there are productivity measures that are going to be utilized now. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from the university level, mm -hmm. if we're going to concentrate on uh, graduation rates, mm -hmm. are we tying some of the performance funding mm -hmm. uh, to those rates mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. enrollment? Mm -hmm. That's the present system mm -hmm. today. So you've got to make those kinds of realignments, and that's mm -hmm. what the governor is attempting mm -hmm. to do, so that the state will therefore be competitive. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that naturally makes the state of Tennessee competitive mm -hmm. is the fact that we have the most robust, robust um, uh, data set mm -hmm. of students that have gone through this pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, we know exactly uh, uh, what the, how they have performed, mm -hmm. and we know exactly what variables are included in mm -hmm. the databases that would, ac that would account mm -hmm. for that performance. Mm -hmm. And so we have some tools here that mm -hmm. we can use to mm -hmm. see what works and what does not work. And so in other words, you've got a, a, a great uh, technological uh, situation that, that, that you can rely upon and that you have been relying upon Absolutely. for the last many years in terms of already having a lot of that uh, data. Available. And that's why I think mm -hmm. that Tennessee will be extremely mm -hmm. competitive as, mm -hmm. as far as those federal funds mm -hmm. are concerned. Very good. And, and of course, uh, we're making uh, preparations for this uh, second commercial break, uh, Dr. Johnson, after which we'll come back and we'll have uh, a final segment that will give you an opportunity to talk about some of the other things that you wanted to talk about when you left uh, coming here and to make sure that you get those things uh, in. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Into each life, a little rain must fall. And what rains on our cities. The uh, guest is